So I've been thinking about buying a mini Moog Model D. Now, I know what you're thinking, but just hold on to that thought for a second. I'm browsing YouTube like I usually do at night when I see a popular online music store company's video pop up. Moog re released the mini Moog again. The cherry finish looks really nice and those knobs look solid. I'm like zooming in on the product photos with like a magnifying tool just to like pixel peek at the buttons. But man, it's $5,000. It's like $5,500 almost with tax. So I'm thinking, you know, trying to justify this crazy purchase in my head, right? If I maybe sell all my current Mo gear, uh, throw in a bit of cash, maybe I can make this work. But let's pause right there. What's crazy here is if you step back for a minute and just like zoom all the way out, there's something wrong with this picture. I'm about to seriously consider spending $5,500 US on a piece of gear that I've never seen or heard in real life. And I'm just going to take the words of a YouTube sales marketing video. Okay, well, obviously, I'm not going to just take the YouTube video sales marketing videos word for it, right? I mean, come on, I'm not a fool. No, instead, I'm going to take the words of perfect strangers in the comment sections of the internet. Okay, so I Google search Mini Moog Model D reviews, and it's easy enough to find several reviews by a few notable websites. I skimmed through the review article because I'm really only here for the comments. Why? Well, because I kind of need to know if people are raving about it or hating on it. Because in this post-pandemic online shopping world where there are no physical stores, this is how we shop now. Taking the words of strangers on the internet who may or may not even be real or actually have even seen or played a mini Moog. The comments are typical and usually very combative. Some say the mini Moog is the real deal and you're a peasant if you settle for a knockoff. Or the mini Moog is like a money grab and you're a fool and you should buy like a Behringer clone instead. So basically over a piece of gear, we become like super tribal and brand others in this pretty niche community as is, as peasants and fools. So now I'm watching like every YouTube review and demos of the Mini Moog. Generally, YouTubers don't like to alienate sponsors, but they can't come across like a shill either. So they're walking a pretty fine line and I'm sure it's not easy. YouTubers have this direct relationship with sponsors and manufacturers, so it gets really messy and complicated fast. I don't question the genuineness of these YouTubers, and they all seem pretty trustworthy, at least the ones that I subscribe to. But how long can this last, this honor system? Knowing that this direct relationship with YouTubers and manufacturers exists, we probably need to maintain some level of skepticism, whether we personally agree or disagree. Okay, so you know, one of the things that irks me the most about reviewers on YouTube or so-called tech tubers is that they take cheap shots at pricing, but ultimately it's more important to emphasize value. And I get it, it's a populist attitude, you know, you can sound really not out of touch by just simply stating that a product is expensive. Uh, I've said this before and I'll say it again, a $100 product can be an absolute worst value, while a $1,000 product could be a steal. It's about value. Owning a product is so much more than just the sticker price. Uh, YouTube reviews should really consider uh, and put a bigger emphasis on things like products, warranty, uh, resale value, uh, customer service, return policy, reliability. You know, because as consumers, that's a big part of the hidden cost of owning a product. Okay, so let's use Apple's new M2 line of products as a prime example of this. Uh, my bet is that there's going to be a whole lot of reviews on how insanely fast it is, uh, how many plugins you can instantiate, or how large or wide your track count is now. And that's fine, and it's amazing. But let's also talk about how it destroys the value of your current Mac uh, and how Apple products are now getting more and more difficult 
and extremely expensive to service and upgrade. Apple keeps churning out these products to keep their stock value high. And so as consumers, we, I think, have to be very careful and very stingy about when we uh, buy into Apple products and when we upgrade. Yes, the new M chips are amazing, but Apple products are not necessarily the best value, especially at this time. The death of the physical store, I think, is the ultimate casualty and the evidence of this broken shopping experience. I'm talking specifically about physical hardware gear, right? Obviously nothing software. I don't know about you guys, but the nearest viable music store with anything interesting in stock is like several hundred miles away from me. So how valuable is it to us as consumers to have access to a physical store for us to demo products for ourselves so that we can decide? And not to just take the words of a YouTuber or a random stranger's comments off the internet. I think this is worth something, but are we willing to pay more? Maybe this is just not feasible now with online stores not going away who can just kind of swoop in and take the sales from physical stores with much higher operational costs. And also with the pandemic, retail stores are a tough business to run. And maybe we as humans, we just want to get a deal up front, even if we know it's going to cost us more down the road. I would love to see more physical stores so that I can check out products before I buy them, but I guess it's just not possible now in the modern era. I'm going to do my best to be as inclusive as possible so that we're not infighting amongst our already pretty small community. And maybe together, we can be a strong voice that can like chip away at some of these tough issues. If I do a review of something, I'm going to do my best to devote a good chunk to value, not just the price. With a holistic approach that takes into account like the manufacturer's build quality, customer service, warranty, resale value, repairability, and recyclability to fight climate change and make value, not price alone, the deciding factor for a positive review. I'm gonna do my best to promote local music stores whenever I can and shop there as often as I can. It's hard because there's nothing around where I live, but I'm gonna try. And as always, I wanna know what you guys think because I think this really is a community issue. Is the current gear review system broken or is it working well for you? Is the way we purchase our gear also broken or is this as good as it gets? Can physical local music stores ever make a comeback or are they just from a bygone era? Let me know in the comments below and um, I will see you guys next time.